Hello everyone, welcome to AFOL Spotlight Live. I am here with Perry Wang, and this is it. This is the first, what do we call this, quarantine edition of AFOL <laughs> Spotlight Live. Let's go! Thank you all so much for coming back to Boone Builds here for AFOL Spotlight Live. I do this every Thursday night. Uh, Perry, you want to tell everybody what AFOL stands for? We've got a lot of people who may be joining us. Uh, you know, They're engaging the LEGO fan community for the first time. Maybe they've seen me on LEGO Masters or maybe they've found us some other way. Um, yeah. What can you tell us? Adult fans of LEGO. Here we are. We, oh, we are them. And, uh, and Perry is one of my favorite AFOLs. Um, Perry, Thanks, Perry is an excellent collaborator. So one of the, one of the few people that have collaborated with me, uh, over and over again, of course, many of you are familiar with Mark Crookshank. You know, he is one of my longtime collaborators, Brett Hooper, um, one of the guys that, you know, we used to meet in his, in his garage and, and build stuff together. Perry Wang is another guy that I just, I can't say enough good about you. Um, you help me stay organized when we're working on projects. Um, <laughs> you've got some really, really wonderful ideas, and I, I just really enjoy the uh, amount of times that we've been able to work together. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I just watched the uh, last episode of Lego Masters, and you guys had to collaborate with <laughs> Sam and Jessica. And uh, I'm like, yeah, those are all good points. Like they were saying that they loved collaborating with you. They loved working with you. And I'm like, that looks real familiar. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thanks. I'm just going to um, go ahead and share with everyone real quickly here. I my This stream is brought to you by BoonBuilds.com. This is where uh, I'm trying to get things going. I've got a bunch of free instructions that I'm really excited about. Um, a new set of instructions that I have for sale here for the Steam Beam. Um, and for Spotlight suggestions, I've received a lot of nice suggestions from the community through boonbuilds.com slash submit. And you can recommend future um, you know, items to be focused on during April Spotlight Live or future um, builders to be focused on during April Spotlight Live. And um, that's how... I, I want to say maybe that's how I knew that. Well, I got Perry today with me. Uh, our guest next week is going to be Grant Davis, and he was a recommendation through our form Sweet. over on BoonBuilds.com. So that should be a lot of fun. But Perry, I think it's time uh, to dive into your story, huh? You want me to show yeah, the slides? Yeah, let's do it. Right. I brought slides, kids. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Here we go. So origin story, before living for Lego, like I sort of do now, I made a living with Lego. So some people, they become AFOLs and then they go and uh, get a job with Lego. It's sort of the other way around. We, we, uh, I, I got the chance to work with Lego before becoming an AFOL. Um, I'm one of the co-founders at a company called Trigger that's in Los Angeles. Uh, Trigger is a like fun company that just makes stuff and it's mostly digital stuff. Um, so you can think of us as sort of like a, uh, an invention company, anything digital, we'll invent it, we'll make it, we'll have fun with it. Um, so for Lego, we did prototypes, um, digital prototypes, uh, prototypes that were like, how do you get digital to work well with physical stuff? Uh, we did mobile apps, we made games and we did some of the film marketing for, um, uh, through Warner Brothers. Um, yeah, and that's a picture of our office with the friends. Uh, I don't know, it's a huge model that got shipped to us from Europe. And that's right there in the lobby of our of our office. And you can go to the next slide. You can see kind of how it was shipped to us and unboxed. Is it still there? Uh, it is not. We had to send it back. And um, like, <laughs> we, <laughs> it's like too bad we didn't save the shipping material to oh. send it back because then we had to, yeah, it was a whole other ordeal. But yeah, it came in all these pieces, um, and then we uh, put the big giant parts together. But it was all glued together, and 
and good to go. But that was a fun day. <laughs> that was a real fun day. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Next slide is uh, I can show you some of the other kind of junk that we've done. Not junk. Amazing creations that we've done. Um, on the left side, there is a shot from San Diego Comic Con. And that's from about 14 or so. And we helped with the release of the Batman Tumblr. Um, so at Comic Con on the show floor, uh, we had an augmented reality experience. You hold up a tablet to it, and, it, and the whole Tumblr came to life, and minifigures came out of it, um, things like that. Um, the center screen and the, the one on the far end are just other photos from our office and some of the other kind of fun prototypes that we've been able to do uh, for Lego. Somebody in the, let's see, uh, the cool factor in the chat says Ecto-1 spotted. Is there one in, is there an Ecto-1 in one of these pictures or is there one in, in your studio behind you? Ecto-1? Yeah, what did they, I wonder what they're saying, Ecto-1 spotted. Well, while I'm oh. there, while I'm there, I'll just, I'll just say a quick hello. We are Lego, the cool factor, King Clanka, <laughs> the Wilderness Nation, Gerard Remus, Caroline O'Neill, Dave Morgan. Dave, thank you for being one of our moderators tonight. Thank you, Dave. Bricks, Bricks and Minifigs in Crest Hill. Uh, uh, Eric Law, thank you all so much for joining us. All right, Perry, thanks for letting me take a break there to say hi to some folks I, in the. I found the Ecto one. It was in the last photo. It was on the desk. One of our project managers, Melissa, made it. And, Where? Uh, yeah. Where? Right there, right there. I don't see it. Uh, green pants. Oh, right here. <laughs> that's awesome wow. yep people are paying attention good Pretty eye amazing. good eye <laughs> this one is a it's a shot of uh some of the stuff that we did for the lego movie we made a couple of games in flash that were free to play online uh, and this was before we knew what the lego movie would be about or how cool it would be this was before the trailers so uh, we sort of had to imagine and uh, we weren't really sure how good that movie would be and it turned out to be just spectacular and we did a little bit of marketing work also on uh, the Batman movie. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, the, the next one, that was a big one for us, was Ultra Agents. Uh, we did a graphic novel that we put into a mobile app. And it was animated. It had all the, the sound design and voiceover. We scripted it. We uh, illustrated it, everything. Um, and uh, we did two years of it, uh, two full-on, I guess you could call them books, uh, we had a lot of fun with that. And luckily for us, we also got the models, uh, pre-production, like prototype models of the full like set of eight or nine for each wave. And when they sent them to us, they just sent them in bubble wrap and we would just kind of open them, take pictures, kind of understand them. And it always amazed me that we never broke one because there were no instructions in existence or even photos to show you how to put it back together properly. Wow. Um, yeah, so that was a fun one, and some of our art even ended up on uh, the boxes for Ultra Agents. Wow, that's that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Derpy Shepbrick says, Boone, who's joining you today? So for anyone who has just joined us in the last few moments, uh, this is my friend Perry Wang. He is a wonderful builder from here in the Portland, Oregon area. We've collaborated on some really awesome projects in the past, and uh, uh, he's, he's great. So we're talking here about kind of where he started and he's telling us the story right now about kind of even before he sort of dove into the hobby he was doing work um through trigger uh, the, a, a company that he co-founded and um we're talking about that right now perry let's right. let's uh let's and don't worry lego master fans we will have a q a at the end and you get to talk to him ask him all the questions you have <laughs> <laughs> another project we got to work on was for lego house and uh, that's the museum in billend um, they have different areas, and one of the areas is an interactive uh, kiosk. And the way that works is there's like a PlayStation in front where you can put little bricks together, and you can put something like five, six, seven bricks into, uh, put them together, and then you put them into a scanning station where that where that kid is standing up against the wall. So you, you put that into the scanning station, and it will actually digitize what you put in there, and it'll turn it into a digital fish. And... Um, uh, that digital fish then gets shot into that aquarium that you see, which is those giant screens. And uh, so we we designed and built everything you see there. And uh, if you go to the next slide, there's a little bit of a better, better picture of the aquarium. 
So um, we I design like that entire interior and all the fish that are in there, your little fish comes to life and interacts with the other fish and other things that are in there. I got to do this um, yeah. when, when I went to the Lego house and I, I, and I was amazed. I, I thought it was, it was brilliant. It was like, um, you know, the, ver the first time I went to Lego house, well, I guess another one that was similar was, um, uh, was it mini chef? Where you you build right. your order and put it in the thing. Did you guys have anything to do with that? We prototyped it. Oh, okay, so it's a similar. Oh, we didn't build it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And so it just it blew my mind because I had never had any experience of building something and you know yeah. putting it under a camera and having and then seeing it in in a digital world. You know, which I just think, you know, if y'all have never been there, yeah. you can look at this screen yeah. and it's all of those fish on the screen are just swimming around in there and they're literally exact replicas of, of real fish yeah. that, that kids yeah. and adults have come by and built using those bricks there. Yeah. And we wanted to emphasize emotion too. So there's some things that are a little scary for the fish that are happening in there and the fish will get scared or there's like a dance sequence. And so the, the fish will start to dance or they'll swim together. Um, so you can see the emotions that come through with them too. Yeah. And, uh, over the day, in case the kid comes back to that exhibit, they can still find their fish. And maybe they, they move a little bit back into the background um, as the day goes on. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You ready to go on? Yeah. Here we go. All right. Another thing that we helped with is called the Mosaic Maker. Oh. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, and that one was launched in uh, London, Lego, the Lego flagship store in London. And the way that that mosaic maker works is you um, you get into the booth. It's a photo booth, and it takes a couple pictures of you, and you get to choose the picture that you want. And once that's done, it prints out that big poster that you see. And uh, that poster is your guide for how to lay out that mosaic. And then you go up to the counter, you buy the rest of that set, which is which is the one that you see there. And the set has enough pieces to make uh, any mosaic that that system will spit out. And um, the guy in the picture there, that's Lawrence uh, Dawes. Uh, Lawrence is one of our employees. And before he joined us, he actually worked at Lego for a number of years. He was a lead designer, and he worked on the first Lego movie, as well as the Ultra Agent series. And he had a bunch of designers working uh, for him. He's uh, super talented. And when he joined our team, it was a dream come true. Awesome. Sorry, I'm tr trying to <laughs> I'm trying to uh, do some. Yes. OK. OK, here we go. And the last one I'll share with you, we uh, had the the fortune of working on Lego Masters, too. So we did a couple of things to help promote the TV show. Uh, one was the um, Facebook effect. It's not, a lot of people have tried out. And that's that one that has the uh, turns your view into a, a Lego mosaic. And those are the actual those are actual Lego colors. And it does it in real time. And so it does it in video, too, which is, I think, the first time I've ever seen that done. And it and it works on both both sides of your phone camera, like your selfie camera as well as your back camera. If you the other thing we did, mm. if you're watching in the live chat, uh, tell us if you tried this app. Perry's company uh, developed this app. Tell us in the live chat. Did you try it? I hope you guys did. Yeah. And the other one we did was a uh, a digital builder that happens in augmented reality, and that's that other photo. Cool. Yeah. All right, awesome. That's great. I was trying to pull in. I was trying to pull in our videos for you know. I exported those videos for later in the stream, and and we'll I'll figure out a way to show them by then. But I'm gonna stop tinkering with it now because I'm I'm sure not giving everyone a great experience. But <laughs> um, so basically, the gist of it is, Perry, you've done some awesome Lego things. Yes. Yes, sir. And um, some fun stuff. And you're going to tell us next about your very first Lego set. Yeah. Uh, my first set is one that I think is familiar to a lot of you. It's a childhood classic. Why don't we show it? <laughs> it's, the, it's the UCS Millennium Falcon. 
Uh, so, so the story behind this is uh, I came home from a work trip and there was a huge box in the living room and my wife said, did you buy furniture? Why did you buy? <laughs> what is this? It was a big box. And I moved it, I shook it around, and I was like, if this is furniture, it's in a thousand pieces, and I'm not building this thing. Like, no way. Yeah. And I, I open it up, I see there's a Lego logo on it, and I had never seen a box that was this color that was from Lego, and and I pulled it out, it was a, the Falcon. I'm like, this is a huge mistake. Either I won a sweepstakes, I didn't know about it, or somebody sent it to me on accident, but I'm keeping it, I don't, I don't care. It turns out it was a gift. It was a super generous gift from my boss, Jason. Um, and uh, it floored me, absolutely floored me. And I I didn't have any place to start building it. Like I had to go and find a table and I had to clear all this space. And modern Lego sets, right? They are numbered, the bags are numbered. So you know to open this bag and then one bag one out of bag 17 or whatever. And then so you, you can focus on doing just that bag. Well, this set, which is over 5,000 pieces, none of the bags are numbered. And it's, it was them. the first one. It was the, the, the first UCS Falcon. Yes, thank you for correcting me. Yeah, this I, is the first UCS Falcon. Yeah, not the not the, the second one. So I had to lay out all 5,000 parts in order to even start the model. And uh, it, uh, it, it and I had never looked for parts before. I was so... Um, unfamiliar with the parts. I couldn't tell dark gray from black, from light gray, from brown. There's occasional brown in there. I, I couldn't tell them apart. So it would take me about two minutes, I kid you not, to find a part. Then then I, it would actually take a few seconds to figure out how to put them together. Yeah. Like it was slow going. Ultimately, it took me four months. Wow. <laughs> what, what year do you think that was? Um, I'm thinking it was 2008. Okay, so it, so, so 12, 12 years ago, yeah, you built your first Lego set. Is that yeah? Is that accurate? That is accurate. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. All right, and and All where right. and where did you go from there? So from there, I did not keep doing Lego. I met other people uh, who enabled me, and so here's a picture of me with uh, the Olsen twins, Davy and his brother Andy, and they're twin brothers, and we uh, met at a car show uh, called Cars and Coffee. It happens every Saturday morning in Portland. And uh, we happen to have the same exact model and make of a Honda Civic. And the more we talk, the more we realized, well, we love the same movies. Uh, we love Star Wars. Uh, we loved a lot of the same things. And we even had the same uh, Nissan Xterras and stuff. And they, they were saying that they love Lego, too. I'm like, oh, Lego, whatever. Like, that's one thing I'm not <laughs> going to get into. That's a money pit. I could tell now there's no way I'm going to get into it. But but they kind of worked at me for years. And um, in the next slide, you can see and uh, you can see Davey's, like, build area. He was working on something. Uh, what he was working on was this huge, like, uh, octane uh, motor race park kind of thing that he was going to show at something called Bricks Cascade. And uh, he invited me over to see it. And I was like, what the heck is this? There's so many pieces. How are you even putting these pieces together? How do you know what to do? Uh, he told me about all the tires that he had to buy. Um, <laughs> you know, and um, so that he said, you got to come to Bricks Cascade. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll come and check it out. And I went on a Saturday and uh, I saw it, and then I was I saw all the other builds, and I realized, wow, this is intense. There's so much creativity, so many great builders there. Um, and uh, these days, Davey and Andy, they are um, theme coordinators for the Star Wars theme, and that's something that started up probably just for them. Uh, they had a whole theme just for Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks, Davey and Andy. <laughs> this is your fault. Yeah, they, uh, they're my enablers. Um, and then I also finally went to a, a Lego user group, a lug. Uh, and we have one in Portland called Port Lug, right? And um, this is picture, these are the only two pictures I took from that first lug meeting that I went to. And uh, in this picture is a friend named Christian and another one, Molly, she's in there. And Molly's, other people. Molly's, in, the, Molly's in the live stream. 
Molly makes awesome. stuff up. Hello, Molly. And there she is. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know what to expect, but people were so nice. Um, and they uh, brought stuff that they from home to share. And the pictures I took here are something called a draft. And the way the draft works is everybody buys and brings their own copy of a set. Here it was the Spider-Man versus Ghost Rider, Spider-Man Ghost Rider set. And then they all open the set and then they take all the parts that are exactly the same parts and they put them into a cup. So if that set only came with like one orange translucent chain, once you pooled everything, you'd have a cup full of like 20 of those chains or more. And uh, then you go into a round robin and everyone who's participating gets to pick a cup. And then you go around in a circle, then you get to go again. It, so it's, it's such a great a, way to get It's such a wild parts. experience. I, I think, yeah. you know, a, a Lego draft is one of the things that I don't even know how to explain to people. You know, it's hard for, for people who are only familiar with building sets or for people who, you know, just kind of tinker at home and, and aren't like working on a library of parts you know, yeah. for, for, for building large things. Um, it, it's hard to even start to begin to explain like why you would do this. Um, but then I find people, when I explain it, they're like, Oh, and it's almost mm -hmm. like I've seen so many people like it clicks in their brain and they're like, well, that's something I want to do. How do I get involved in that? And, and it's, what are your favorite parts that you got out of a draft? Um, I really like, Oh, I, I love getting like bars and clips and stuff like that. Um, I really like getting stuff that you don't see a lot on like the pick brick wall. Um, uh, what else? I, I always go for bars. I don't know why I like bars so much. I just, <laughs> I think, I think um, I'm really intrigued by, I'm really intrigued by Lego pieces that don't have any studs or anti studs. So like oh, wow. bars and clips and, and, you know, bread and bread. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So that, that stuff, that stuff intrigues me, but that's awesome. You've got a, uh, your, your studio. You want to take a look at your yeah. 2000, 2016 or you want to talk more about. So, yeah, let's do that. So after that first lug meeting, I, I started the, you know, collecting more pieces, getting pieces either from the Lego store, mostly from the Lego store, or my own my own stuff. And this was my first little build station. Uh, my wife, Karen, who's extremely influential in, her, in all my early mods, like, she's like, okay, you can have part of that front room that we're not really using anything for, uh, but but keep it tidy. Don't don't go too far out beyond those, those uh, borders, you know, and I was like, sure, no problem. Like, how could I ever accumulate more than what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I built uh, for several years uh, until you see the next slide, which is a little more recent. Um, <laughs> now it's kind of, it, it actually, this is our bonus room. So I, I upgraded and went to our bonus room. And at one point I basically took over the whole room and she said, look, that's not okay. This is a bonus room. We're supposed to share it. And so there's almost like a visible line down the middle of that room where you can see her stuff and there's no Lego. And then it's my stuff and all Lego on the other side of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so there, there's a <laughs> big difference. There's a lot more stuff and there's a closet full of stuff. And um, in this picture, there's actually the old UCS Falcon in the corner. That's the one that I built Okay. 12 years ago. And then there's the new one here. And this one is from the office and we start, they, they bought it um, at the office the year that Falcon came out, which I think it was 2017 or maybe it was early 2018 that they bought it and they wanted to build it into a coffee table. And I, I guess my boss thought it would be a fun team building thing for everybody to like get together and build. But, you know, you forget as an AFAL that non AFALs, feel like these really big sets are like torture. Like there, there's so many pieces to them. Yeah. They open them up and they're like, really, I have to do, I mean, it just, it hurts them. It, it's not the fun that we think it is. So guess what? The Falcon sat um, incomplete. I got, they got to bag four out of 17. It sat that way, I think for almost a year. And that's at, at work because it's, it's at work. a bunch of people from your work trying to 
make progress on it when they could. Yes, they got into back four, which is amazing, which is amazing. And then, yeah. I, and then it sat, and I said, you know, I don't think this is going to happen. So why don't you let me work on it? I can bang it out really fast. And there's like and, 24 bags, right? And there's 17. 17, okay. And, and turns out I didn't bang it out fast at all. I took over a year and a half myself, and I wow. had a lot of help. Uh, we had Brett helping me, uh, Brett's son helping. Uh, we had Mike Johnson helping. And, and, uh, and I finally finished it because of the COVID lockdown. I finished it this last weekend. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, uh, real quick, we've got a lot more people in the live chat. I just want to say hi to wow. Shadow Wolf 99 Buckets are great. Thank you so much. Um, Buckets are great said, Boone, I sent you my Lego creation. Yeah, I just actually posted a Lego challenge on my Facebook and uh, I'll do a, a video uh, or probably early next week kind of recapping all of the entries that I got there and that'll be on here on YouTube. Um, so check that out. We've got uh, It's Pronounced Cook. We've got Ryan Van Duzer, uh, Jason Curtis, Molly Makes Stuff Up, uh, Jaron Kelly. Jaron, welcome. I feel like I'm seeing new people in this time. Who else? Mike Johnson. Thanks for watching. Hey, Mike, I'm going to, um, let's see. I'm still waiting on building that coffee table. What's he talking about for the Mike? Mike's going to build our coffee table for that Falcon. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> I think I'm going to, um, let's see. I'll let you talk about the next thing. I'm going to, Oh, this is an important one for you, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, Building Lego uh, started a lot with uh, pick a brick cups, right? And um, yeah, what I did to get a lot of brick at the beginning was to just go to the the Lego store at Downtown Disney, and I was able to pick up uh, a couple of first cups. And those cups, right? You buy it based on the cup. It's like 16, 17 bucks for the cup. So me being as frugal as I am, I wanted to pack that cup to the hilt, and that's what you see here, is I, I packed almost every millimeter I could figure out to do and uh, figure out how to like shove as much stuff in there. And because that was basically the only brick I ended up with, that was the only stuff I was building was stuff using that brick. Um, so the encouragement I wanted to give people was, uh, you know, sometimes people think, oh, I, I don't have a lot of brick or I don't have a lot of sets. Um, but there's still a lot of fun stuff that you can build uh, using what you have and especially build stuff that makes you happy. Um, I love clean stuff that uses a lot of white or um, that just has a little bit of chaos in it. Um, and it ended up where I ended up building more and more stuff, not for myself, but because my wife was challenging me to build stuff for her, stuff that she would enjoy too. Um, and, uh, I'll have, I have pictures of it a little bit later, but I think she just thought it was funny that as a grown man, I was playing with Lego. So she's like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this instead? You know, um, we can show the next slide. There's a couple other things that I did with all the pick a brick stuff that I had. I built a thing that was sort of like a, a vase with windows and green sticks sticking out of it. <laughs> uh, right. And, uh, I built, a, another weird thing in it with windows on it and um they're sort of like gumball machines with studs studs were easy to come by when you pack a pick a brick cup because uh, you can use the studs to fill all the spare spaces um the next slide is uh i i thought i was being really clever and making some kind of an architectural pool and uh, I, I came home and my wife had, had put a, a creature in there. And that was the only minifigure I had, I think, at the time, was that <laughs> one right there. Um, and I, I, I heard about micro scale. So I'm like, can I make a, a neighborhood? Maybe I can, right? So I, I played around with that a little bit too. I'm like, oh, thank goodness I have these yellow pieces. And those are the only yellow pieces I had. Uh, and then at our lug, at one month, they had a, a bill challenge. So we meet monthly and sometimes they say, okay, for this next month, here's the challenge. Bring up, bring a, a creation that, that is that challenge. And I don't know what that challenge was that time, but this is the, this is what I made. I made a, um, a, a guy taking a photo and, and uh, enjoying himself 
and it's called the best day of my life so far. But he doesn't know that there's a giant mechanical yeah, shark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> about to get him. I gotta I gotta say, Ryan Van Duzer in the live chat said, Lego has Lego has to come out with a square cup for pick a brick. It's ridiculous. It never yeah. that never even occurred to me, but it would make so much more sense. But they still they have to stack. And I, they could still do a graduated square cup, but it would it would be better. But it's still, I'm sure it's still it was intentional. It still wouldn't be ideal because it would have to right. stack. But yeah, yeah, just I mean, Ryan, you've got to be putting in itty bitty stuff to fill in your gaps, right? Yeah, um, I hope so. There's all sorts of tricks. Like if you buy windows or panels, you can uh, clip them together, and there's like this negative space in between that usually you can put a bunch of stuff in. Oh yeah. And uh, and so if you just Google like techniques, there's all these techniques online on how to do it. Yeah, for sure. What uh, what do we got here? Puppy playground. So this is one of the first things my wife said, hey, this is what I want you to build. All the stuff you're building is good and fine, but build something for me. So we uh, take morning walks every single morning. We take our puppy down to uh, the coffee stand and there's a coffee window and she's trained to know that she's going to get a, a dog treat out of that window. So I built a a, a playground that was just for the, the puppy. And our puppy is a husky, by the way. So that's why we have a husky here. So that that's her at the window um, asking for a cookie. And Karen added this dog, this brown dog you see, that's kind of upside down. And I didn't even notice it for like a day until I realized <laughs> there was no, no actual way she could have done that. Like I didn't know how she stuck that upside down the way she did. And it turns out she used uh, dental wax and it just stuck it onto that dog and stuck it upside down into an anti-stud. And then the other picture is uh, Indy uh, at our front door barking at uh, the mailman who's delivering packages. She's really territorial, and and that's her, her that's her job. Nice, nice. Yeah. Let's go to the question break. Woohoo! Question break. All right, everybody. <laughs> So if you're watching, uh, Perry's got a couple questions for you to think about, and we'll answer them too, and you can pipe in in the live chat. Um, so here, Perry, what's your first question? That question for the guys in the chat is, what kind of Lego builder are you? Yeah, like when I first went to my love meeting and started meeting Lego builders, I didn't know that there was more than one kind of builder. I thought that every Lego builder pretty much had the same goals in mind and had the same interests. But pretty quickly, I realized that there are people who love micro scale or love building something in uh, that's a classic space set and and increasing it by three times larger, right? Like Jason Ruff does. Mm. Um, there's all sorts of builders out there. Um, some that just use Lego as a medium. You know, they 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 are actually trained in in fine art, like Sam Hatfield is, right? So. That's the question we got for you guys, is what kind of Lego builder are you? And I put down a couple that I could think of, right? Um, like, to me, a purist is somebody who's like, I'll build the official Lego sets, and I'm done, period, right? I'm done. Or there's scale modelers, right, who are like, I really love this car, or I really love this refrigerator, and I'm going to build this refrigerator as accurately as I can. And there are architects, like Dave Morgan is an architect, Right? Like he's just figuring out how to take a, a building and, and, and put it into a Lego scale. There's nostalgists. I love what Molly does. Um, she does stuff that like instantly takes me back to my childhood, right? Like Mr. Rogers or those toys. Fisher Price, the Fisher Price toys. The, the Fisher Price toys. I'm like, I haven't seen that Fisher Price toy in 40 years. Yeah. And there it is in Lego. And then there are storytellers or people that just create and craft amazing worlds. And then there's entertainers. And uh, Boo and I put you in this category for entertainer. Like you make stuff that you think uh, people will enjoy seeing. And you've got a good eye for what you think people will enjoy uh, and, and being able to present it in a way that people will, will love too. And then there are jokers. Right? Can you guess? Can you can you think of a joker? <laughs> um, man, who's a joker? You put me on the spot. Ah, gotcha. 
I never stump you. I think you, the people that fall in this category include JJ and James. Yeah, yeah. JJ Williams and James, who you had on last time. You know, they love to just have fun. Um, and then the mad scientists. I also put you in that category. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some of the I stuff think, that you, you're pulling off in the show. Yeah, really great. I feel like um, you, you know, I think about like, uh, well, I don't want to spoil future slides in your story here by talking about but i think you're a little bit of a so there's this thing that i really love to do and i feel like i've i've sensed it in your builds too is where you take something that someone recognizes Uh and you sort of like mash it up with something that they wouldn't have expected (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and I, I love doing that. And I feel like you've done that to a fair degree too. So it, maybe that's mm. a little bit mad scientist. Maybe that's, um, maybe that's a little bit storyteller. I don't, I don't know, but, uh, but yeah. I, I like these. Let me, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go through a few that are in the, uh, so Ryan Van Duzer says mad scientist, um, Charlupe, I'm assuming that's how to spell or, or Charloupe. Charlupe says storyteller, Zach five ninety eight says purist. You know, I've also I, I I've often heard the term purist used um, not for the kind of builder you are, but how um, how diligently you stick to yeah Lego elements purely. You know yeah um, yeah, and you know whether or not you use lighting. You know, I know like Ryan uh, Ryan Zagalo is is extremely lego purist he will not use lighting he won't yeah. use, he won't use lights from harbor freight or from um brick stuff you know he he will wow. not he will not use um you know he he would not use a any i don't know I, what are some other good examples of uh <laughs> he wouldn't use string he wouldn't you know he wouldn't use string right. or stickers or any right. anything that's out. produced yeah. by yeah you know I, I think a lot of people are have are really flexible with like they might use Arduino or they might use you know just random lights that they can get or or they might print out their own um, you know their own graphics you know either right. on on bricks you know have bricks pr- custom printed or custom engraved or or print out stickers at home and and I know a yeah. lot of a lot of people do that but um, some people are you know, if Lego did not produce the piece, they won't yeah. use it. Um, yeah. So I've also heard yeah. that, you know, as sort of a, a definition of that purist yes. term. Yeah. But Yeah. Yeah, like totally. And I, I think the encouragement for everybody, especially if you're new to the Lego community, is that there is no one size fits all type. You don't have to look like or do the same things that the other people you meet do. Right. Yeah. You yeah. find your own lane and your own path and and then build stuff that that is fun for you. you. You know, you may look at a mad scientist and that's not your thing. You may look at the scale modelers and go, that's not my thing either. I know for me, I could never be a scale modeler because I don't have the skill to translate stuff into real world objects the way that like um, Jake uh, Sadovich can. Like he can make that translation. He sees a part and in, in his mind, the rest of that, you know, airplane comes into into reality yeah. uh, because he he can he knows he can build the rest of it. And yeah, and he, he and he just he just over and over again builds stuff that in photographs at first glance you don't recognize it's Lego, right? You know, and he's done it over and over right. again. Um, yeah, his yeah. the the ideas set that he's got right now with the uh, the the pedal car. It's just yeah. a, it's just nuts. You you glance yeah. at it and it's a pedal car, and then you realize it's made out of Lego. Yeah. His um his his uh chopper, the uh the motorcycle that he yeah. just that it's like you glance at it, it looks like a motorcycle, and then you realize it's made out of Lego. The yeah. I feel like the ship in a bottle is the same way. Yeah, it's wild yeah. stuff. I I I think I told Jake like you could probably teach a month long Lego building course from that chopper that he made i'm like, sure there's so many advanced techniques in there you could teach a whole course <laughs> just yeah. incredible cody otley says jake hashtag ringer that's what they that's what they call him at brick slopes the ringer because he just comes and wins all the awards oh it's the same at bricks cascade yeah yeah 
I think Jake won seven awards his first year at Brooks Cascade. Yeah. Um, Basically everything he brought, he, he won an award. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, move on. Okay. So speaking of Brooks Cascade. Yeah. So my first Lego convention as an attendee was in 2017. And I didn't really know what conventions were. So I made a slide to help uh, kind of describe what that is. The one I went to, it's our local one here in Portland called Bricks Cascade. And what it is, is it's actually a four day event. And ours is at the Oregon Convention Center. And we have a lot of space. It's enough space to fit a couple airplanes in, right? And uh, this past year, we had a lot of people participating. We had over 500 people participating. We had over 1,000 original creations made. So it's a four-day event. The first two days, a Thursday and Friday, and that's when we set up, right? That's when you're like bringing all your stuff in and you're putting it in the right place and making sure everything works or doesn't work. And there are some games that we play, um, uh, all sorts of fun stuff, and we do exchanges and there's things to buy or there's things to see and learn. There's panels. Um, and then the last two days are public expo days. So we sell tickets for the public to come between, you know, about 10 to 4 or 10 to 5 p.m. And they come through the hall and they enjoy everything. So you get to show off everything you've done. And for some people, it's stuff you've worked all year on. And this is the first time you're showing it uh, to the world. And, you know, seeing those kids' reactions and the adults' reactions, and um, it's just so worth it, you know, all the time that we put into it to see how much they they love uh, seeing the creations. So that's what a convention is. So sometimes people say, oh, there's, I've been to I've been to Bricks Cascade, but maybe you're only there for the two public days. But it's a whole other thing uh, to go to the entire four day convention. It takes yeah. two days to set up, two hours to get out. I don't know how that's possible, but that's yeah, the truth. it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> um, oh man! All right, cool. So your All first right. your first time was 2017. And this is my first picture that I took um, was uh, with uh, Christian, Christian Benito. And I didn't know anybody at this uh, event. And uh, Christian had an open seat and he said, hey, sit with me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so awesome. Like, I'm an introvert. I'm not going to go and just introduce myself to people. I, I, it, was, it made my day that he uh, saved that seat for me and asked me to sit with him. And we did the whole hashtag Bricks Cascade Buddies. That was the theme for that year. And, um, and we took a lot of uh, fun pictures that year. And that's the first one that I took. And then uh, we had an orientation. That's the slide in the corner. And uh, James was the MC, and he just reminded us to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And that's so true. If you don't <laughs> hydrate, man, you get like a headache, and you'll get your immune system goes down, all those kinds of bad things happen. Um, so it's so nice to have an orientation. And if it's your first time going to one of these things, uh, there will be an orientation. There will be people to help you along. Um, and then the last picture there, that's me meeting Tom Alpin. And um, he's an author of a book called Lego Architecture. It was yeah. one of the first Lego-related books I had ever bought. I think it's and, called Lego, uh, Lego Architect. Lego I Architect. I, I think. Yes, yes. And so I had bought the book. I, I think I brought it for him to sign. And uh, he was so nice. He was so generous. And I, I remember thinking, this is the pinnacle of Lego, like, celebrity that I'm ever going to meet. Like, this is probably it. This is probably the, the most well-known person I'm ever going to meet <laughs> that, uh, that does anything with Lego. Um, so he's a great guy. <laughs> All, All right. right. What do we got next? All right, so this is what I brought to my next year, or maybe it was next year, maybe it was this year, I don't know. I brought my own mock, and the the the, the idea was, it's some it's called Fabuland Wars. This is the first thing I ever made and displayed. And um, the challenge was to create a Star Wars-themed uh, creation using colors and story inspired by the old lego fabuland play theme right so that was a theme i think in the 70s and 80s or somewhere in there it was before minifigs existed uh instead they had um 
uh, these little animal characters. And it was very colorful. It was mostly primary colors. I've got and one they of were those. always doing, you got one? I've got one. They were always doing somewhere. stuff like farming, right? They were always doing really uh, nice, uh, benign things. Watch, and, look, uh, that's what happens when you. <laughs> what did I do? I accidentally. There we go. I accidentally hit the help button on the presentation there. There we go. So what I built were uh, walkers uh, with the carbon freezing kind of thing. And uh, it's called Clara and Bunny Carbon Freeze the Year's Harvest. And I, and I wrote a whole story for it too. And there were so many amazing uh, creations that year in the same, uh, same category uh, that also tried to... Um, uh, you know, enter and 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 kind of win the prize for that that year. There was a there was a prize that I, I had no idea what it was. I had heard rumors that there was some kind of a classic thing that they that the, the organizer for that theme was going to give away. Um, I'll go to the next slide. You can see kind of a close up of this mock, right? So there's a carbon freezing chamber, and instead of Han Solo getting lower down, it was his vegetables. Uh, their vegetables are getting uh, frozen and then freeze dried and put in cans. There you go. The crazy you know that one's a name. Uh, no, I don't. Do you? No. <laughs> so the crazy thing about these Fabuland characters, and let me, there's there's a some. We were talking about where did it go? We were talking earlier about oh, uh, um, you know, just other like weird scale figures and um you know mark and i and jake sadovich or we're there, a bunch of us are really into building stuff out of for like weird scale figures you know yeah yeah and um it, oh it's almost exclusively stuff that nobody makes anymore um well you can you can take a technic fig these guys and yep. uh pop the head off and a uh, uh fabuland head what will fit on the body of a technic person. So then you what? get you've got like this this humanoid, <laughs> you know, this sort of humanoid character with like this really like weird cat head on it. Oh, I love it. Um that is so creepy. <laughs> it looks like a human wearing those animal masks. Will, like something out of the purge or something. Will Hafner asked about Jack Stone. Will were you watching were you watching uh me and Mark do our uh, live stream on Instagram earlier because I I just I've never had Jack Stone figures and I just got a bag of Jack Stone figures from from Bricklink, wow. um, so I'm excited to build something for them, and and now I have a a, a Technic figure with a cat head, so that's nice. cool. All right, I'm okay. sorry I didn't mean to I didn't mean to derail us so drastically, but there you yeah, go. No uh, all right, let's go look at this next slide. This is what I won. So I actually won that the category, the theme, uh, Fabuland Wars. I won out against a lot of amazing builders, and I didn't even know what the prize was. This was the prize. It was not a new set. It was a used set. It's monorail. It's very valuable, and um, I love it. <laughs> let's go to the next one. Let this me is just, my wife, Karen. Oh, go ahead. Let me, let me answer a couple questions here real quick. Um uh, let's see. Someone said, da, 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 da. Boone. Oh, Pittsburgh sports car. Thanks or port, Pittsburgh sports caster. Thanks for being here. Boone, are you doing another build challenge soon? Yes, I will do another build challenge. So the build challenge that I just completed, um, there will be a video that comes out, um, sort of featuring all of those builds next early next week, probably Tuesday of next week, that video will come out. Um, and then hopefully at that point in time, I'll know what the next build challenge is so that I can announce it and, uh, and we'll go from there. So, yeah. Um, and then there was one other, uh, lost sleep. Oh, lost sleep. Is that, is that Sam? Is that wildflower? Lost sleep. Tell us if you're wildflower. Um, anyway, uh, Lost Sleep says, is it cold there in your garage? It was, but I have some, uh, oh yeah, it is. It says, hello, this is Sam. Lost Sleep, Sam Hatmaker. Um, hey Sam. 
f from uh from Lego Masters is in the live chat. Thank you so much Thanks. for for being there. Um let's see. The uh it's not that cold. I have a heater on in the garage. So it's it's doing okay. All right, Perry. We'll Should get we back give to people a fair warning that we're going to go over on time? We are definitely going to go over on time. <laughs> it is 6:50. It is yeah. it is quarantine the quarantine special tonight on April yeah. Spotlight Live, um, <laughs> so we will definitely go over buckle in. Um, it is ten to seven, and we still have sixty viewers, sixty one viewers. So I think we're doing fine. Perry, take us back to Karen here. So this is my wife Karen. Uh, this is another thing that I built. It's called the Brutalist Principle of Diminishing Marginal Returns. I built this big building in red and white. Those are all the bricks that I had in that color or that size. And, um, or sorry, that's all that I had in that quantity. And she said, all right, that's all good and fine. That's kind of boring. Can you build it smaller than that? So I was kind of annoyed. I, I built a smaller one. Then when I was done, I was like, okay, I'm done. She says, can you do it even smaller than that? So I went back for another couple of hours, figured out how to do it even smaller. And that went on a couple times before you get to the smallest one that you see there. And since then I've actually added one more in between the first two in scale. So that's an example of building stuff that your, your wife likes. It's very important uh, <laughs> uh, as an A-fall. Nice. Uh, oh, oh I got to say, oh, speaking, yeah. speaking of wives, Danny just sorted Lego with me for the what? very first time last wow. night wow. And, and she kept going today so apparently wow. something about it she doesn't build um she loves supporting myself and my daughters in our our love of lego um but oh, she, but she, awesome. she but for the very first time danny has started sorting lego so yeah i we're gonna, we're gonna we're thing. gonna make it we're gonna make it's it all the other thing is the spouses and the partners like they 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 either you go to do Lego to get away from them, or you'd go and do Lego to be with them. And then there's some that compliment you, like with Danny. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. And next up, um, we have the... This the... guy, at at Walker. This is Addy, the gentle walker. <laughs> um, also part of Fabuland. He's a little clumsy. We can go to the next one. This is what I did with that monorail. Um I built something called Crystal Caverns. It's a, uh, a theme park ride. And the idea was to create something where it sort of breaks the fourth wall. Uh, I remember as a kid seeing uh, the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. And from the parking lot, the Indiana Jones ride is just a big green building. Um, but if you're in the park, you don't even realize there's a big green building. You just see what they want you to see. And then you kind of, as the ride progresses, you disappear into the into the show uh, uh, building. And so that was the idea here, as I took a monorail, had to go indoors, outdoors, there's a whole queue, there's a whole section where people have their um, strollers all kind of in a jumbled mess. Um, and uh, and then on that, let's go to the next slide, there's, there's, a whole, there's a section where you can kind of see what's inside as they go through that show building. And then there's a wampa escaping from the show building. <laughs> and they've called the park security and the fire over to kind of control the wampa. And uh, you can see there are a couple of characters, like dressed up characters, like the shark guy. Um, but this was ambitious. I, <laughs> I added lights. I added, um, of course, there's the monorail. I had uh, four husky dogs all kind of jumping up and down um, like they were barking. I had all sorts of animation in this one, so that one was a lot of fun. Uh, hey, Perry, did you build the monorail? Jeff, thank you very much, Jeff. Our first uh, super chat of the evening. Thank you to thank everyone you. who. Uh, th I I I'm, I need to figure out how to get a list of names from super chats in YouTube because I want to be able to thank those people because you make this possible. And there were, there were a number of you last time we did this. So thank you very much. Jeff says, Perry, did you build the monorail? Sorry. Video. Sure did. 
here it is. <laughs> so, I built it like the way it is in the instructions, and then I built it this way. Awesome. Cool. All right, let's go. Dallin, Dallin says, awesome storytelling for the win. Thank you. Go. Um, so, yeah, I went, and, and uh, after seeing the movie Solo, uh, I really loved the idea of the escape pod that, that they put on the front of that Falcon. So I took my first UCS Falcon and I built an hold escape. On, hold on, Jeff <laughs> called Jeff called me out for not saying his last name. So okay. uh, Ritzman got it right, and I believe Ritzman said Mickelwee. Jeff Mickelwee. Mickelwee. Jeff Mickelwee. Mickelwee. All right. I he he gave five dollars to the chat. So if he wants me to say his last name, I gotta say his last name. We'll, Jeff. We'll say it as much as he wants. What's his last name? I think it's I think it's Mickelwee. We gotta wait, Mick. I was trying to make it like McElwee or something like that. I think I think Ritzman said Jeff Mickelwee, and I was like, oh yeah, okay, that's easy. It almost like like it rhymes with no. He says no. I'm not doing it right. <laughs> Dang it, Jeff. Thanks for okay. Hold on a second, everybody. We're gonna take it. We're gonna McElwee. Is it McElwee? How about that one? Next, try again. Did James Ritzman say it right two weeks ago? Is it is it is it Mickleway? Can you spell it phonetically in the chat? <laughs> Jason Curtis says, "Sorry, I can't give money." That's fine, Jason. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Jason says, "Jeff says Jeff says next next work." next week oh all right well thanks for watching jeff <laughs> my heart hurts next week he did dang it he said it right ritzman said it right okay all right jeff i'm gonna call ritzman i'm gonna ask him oh mac 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 l we mac l we mac l we James McElwee. McElwee? Is that, get, am I getting close? Everyone is like, what are they talking about? Molly referenced Rumpelstiltskin, which is amazing. McElwee. Jeff McElwee. Let's try that. We'll see. <laughs> He'll tell us. All right, Perry, back to Solo. Uh, Solo. Solo has, he's got an escape pod that uh, I think Lando added to the to the, the Corellian freighter. And so I wanted to build one too. So I built one. And um, it lines up pretty well. There's some things I would have changed on it, but uh, it is fully detachable and you can clip it back on as well. And then the top flips open. So you can see uh, Han Solo in there. And But I, I outfitted it to look like it was still Lando's version. So it's got Lando's color scheme with the yellow seats. And then the full, like, there's a full mini bar in there, which I also thought Lando would have. And then, of course, it's got a hidden compartment on the floor um, where you can hide stuff. Um, there were not a lot of pictures of what this escape pod looked like, but I think I got pretty close to it. My next goal is to build one for the, the new UCS uh, Falcon. I think that would be fun. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Next question I had for everybody. You want to read this one, Boone? If Lego bricks were edible, which official set would you eat first? <laughs> well, this is a question for the chat, but also for you, Boone. If Lego bricks were edible, which official set would you eat first? And I would say maybe Taj Mahal, because I can what? totally I can totally imagine it as like like a like a wedding cake you know and so yeah. like in my mind it's like cake inside and it's like white frosting all over the outside is that nice or no is that was that not that what you is that not what you were going for oh no that works that's great that's not what i had in mind but that works i thought that every lego brick based on its color would have a unique flavor like oh, skittles oh okay okay right? So that's really brave to pick the Taj Mahal because it's all what if one it's a flavor you hate? 
you're in trouble. If it's like, it's what if it, what if it was instead like those disgusting mints from weddings? You know how when you go to weddings and there's like bowls of those little disgusting mints, and yeah. you like, yeah. yeah, they're like chalky grossness. Um, or what if they're like jelly bellies or uh, jelly beans, right? Where yeah. there's some that are just terrible yeah. tasting. Holly, Holly says hot dog stand. Uh, Gerard, uh, Gerard says yellow submarine. <laughs> uh, Jaron says I'd eat the treehouse first. Yummy. <laughs> That'd be like broccoli. Um, <laughs> Perry, do you have an answer? I think I'd start with a, a friend's poly bag. So you get a little taste of everything, okay, and then figure out because I, I can't commit to like a whole set. Like, come on, if it if it tastes bad, there's no way I can finish it, and I feel bad. It's kind of wasteful. I was raised better. Than that. <laughs> oh yeah, so it would be like um like you know a lot of system or a lot of like classic sets would be like the standard bag of Skittles, mm -hmm. and and the the friends sets would be like a tropical bag of Skittles. Yeah, Is exactly. That what yeah, okay. I All think right. so. I think right. so. Yeah. And then Technic, I don't know what to make of that. Maybe it's a little sandy. Jeff McElwee says Ghostbusters Firehouse. <laughs> I. I, I I took another opportunity to get his last name right, I hope. Uh, Holly says, you guys are weird. <laughs> I don't know if she's talking to us or everyone in the chat. Yeah, Holly, I need the Coraline uh, house. That looks delicious. Doesn't that look delicious? It's all pink and oh, white. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, you could totally make that out of a... Out of a uh, uh, <laughs> oh, Corey Kinnick says, any trolls set. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, yeah, those would be good. Uh, Lincoln Israel says, how many builds do you two do each week? <laughs> I, some weeks, none. Some weeks, I work on multiples. I don't know how to answer that question. All right, it's not Q&A time yet. Perry, tell us, about our, tell us about our first collaboration. Yeah, so our first one uh, was for something called Brick Rogers. And this is the team that did Brick Rogers. Brick Rogers is... The name that Boone gave to this collectible minifigure that you see here. And those other little starships are the ones that Boone made. Uh, and he built those and he said, you know what, it wouldn't be cool if we built a collaborative. It was a whole scene around Brick Rogers and his kind of life and all his friends. And actually and so in that in that picture there, the top mm -hmm. right speeder was built by Mark. Oh so, yes. So you can see hopefully you can all see this picture is a little blurry. But uh, Mark Crookshank is at the far right of the build or of the picture. Perry is directly to Mark's, well, to your left of Mark. Um, <laughs> Brett is between Perry and I, and then I'm on, I'm on the end there. So this is a, you know, this is a, um, one of those cool pictures from long before Lego Masters, where you you see me, you see Mark, and you you get to see Perry and Brett with us there. So it's fun. They invited me to build with them. And uh, they, they kind of gave me some information about what it was. And so me being sort of an overachiever, the first thing I built was this giant communication tower. And I, I brought it to one of the lug meetings. And I could tell that like Boone, you and Mark were sort of like, oh, this is way bigger than we thought it was going to be. And I was like, oh, crap, I kind of uh, overdid it, you know? Um, but it's got a rotating thing on it, and I remember it sort of pushed you guys to build the rest of the layout even taller, uh, which I, I'm really happy about. Um, yeah. So that was the first thing I did, and then I built that rover, and uh, we still need even more, so I built a little garden greenhouse, and that's the thing on the, the far end. And then I put a picture of the full layout. Um, not a, I wish it was a little bit, I couldn't find a picture that showed more of it, but it it was uh, pretty spectacular. And uh, what does the sign say on it? it? Says Brick Rogers too. Yeah, I think so. Brick Rogers. And we had, yeah, and we had a space backdrop. And oh, we had the monorail. Yeah, so we made that second. I made that second sign because I registered this. So that was back when you couldn't register at Bricks Cascade. You couldn't register under a team name. You could only register under an individual's name. So, so the mock card just said Boone Langston, and um, so we we put a second card there that said Mark Crookshank, Brett Hooper, Perry Wang. Yeah, 
And that was a lot of fun. And that was the first time that I got to collaborate with these guys. And um, they had been calling themselves the Troutdale Build League. And uh, at the end of this convention, they awarded me my own brick badge that says Troutdale Build League. And to this day, it's going to be my most precious uh, little brick that oh, I've man. got is that one. And I don't, I don't live in that particular city. So, Troutdale is the name of the city where uh, the rest of the builders happen to live. I don't live there. But yeah. when they gave me the brick, they said I had 90 days to move there in order to keep the brick. <laughs> um, and you didn't, but that's okay. Uh, and Mark now no longer lives in Troutdale. So Brett and, right. I, Brett and I are still here in Troutdale. But I feel like since you don't live here and Mark doesn't live here, I, I feel like this year the the word the term Troutdale Build League has certainly died down a little bit. Still a still a, a tender place in all of our hearts for that. <laughs> the next collaborative that we all worked on was Dupocalypse. And this is something that um uh came from Boone's uh brain. And that sign you see back there, Boone came up with, and that's when I realized Boone was a great designer. He took the Dupac he put the Duplo bunny and gave him a red bandana. Like, who does that, right? And then he made a sign that says Dupocalypse. And the whole idea behind Dupocalypse is you take Duplo, uh, like a like a chassis from Duplo, uh, either a, a truck or a car uh, shell, and you add normal stuff to it, like system Lego bricks. They happen to fit together. Duplo works with system stuff. And then you detail it out from there. And the idea was to create a, like a, a moving, roving horde of vehicles going through the desert. And um, this is taken from a couple years ago. And we had so many uh, other entries into that collab. We made this collab an uh, open one that year. Um, and people were showing up uh, with stuff they had just built the night before because they saw it on Thursday. And then the next day they showed up with the with, uh, something crazy i think lige's giant mech he made did he make that overnight i don't know i feel like he did and it's a very voltron ish um it's hard to tell in the picture but it's it's like i don't know almost over two feet tall and it's all duplo um, yeah yeah there are people doing train stuff amazing stuff and then that red roadster in front was jake sadovich's uh which is again you look at it and you're like that's not lego yeah, but it yeah, is yeah and it's like that's not Duplo, but it is. There's yeah. Duplo in there too. It's actually yeah. it's actually predominantly Duplo. He's got Duplo Tulo in there, which is super weird and old and rare. Um, yeah, G Smelly says uh, at Boone Builds, you created that sign. Yeah, I created the sign. Yep. That's you know sometimes for me, sometimes for me when I have an idea, like an idea can exist and it can be cool and I can be excited about it, but then when I can create some sort of visual representation of what that idea means. And, and sometimes for me, that's as easy as a logo. And if I can send somebody a logo for the idea and, and if that can encapsulate, you know, kind of like the spirit of what we're, of what we're going for, um, then I'm, I can be real happy. And, and it, it's like at that point when it has a name and it has sort of an image to represent it, 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 it becomes real to me, but anyway. Jeff says the bunny seen some things. Witness him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, uh, Jeff, where are you from? Have we met in person? Uh, because you're funny. Okay. Yeah, I like that guy. And then I put three of my mocks in there. That's the next slide. Um, Hell hath no fury like a toddler scorned. Um, and he's got a little roving remote brick that fits into the back of that yellow truck. Uh, I wanted to do a big 4x4 with working shocks, so that's um, I'm angry that you're angry. And then uh, I wanted to do a dinosaur. with You know how T-Rexes have those tiny little arms? I gave them much bigger arms. So now it's called <laughs> is it because of my tiny arms. Yeah, awesome. Oh, uh, I sometimes I think that we should have a whole category of awards at conventions that's just to like award the most clever names for mocks. Because I think it's really easy for people to walk through the room and see the mocks without really 
you know, having any from because a lot of a lot of mocks just have a name. It's just blop yeah. the blop or this the that. Um, but hell hath no fury like a toddler scorned is is an incredible name for a mock and uh and it and it's just it's you know it adds depth to the idea of dupocalypse and the idea of dupocalypse you know plays with that name and and then you add it to the mock itself and it's just it's brilliant um yeah. I, I would have given Thank an award you. for that uh, but i think it's i think it's easy to you know see a lot of mocks without knowing what they're called and and i think i think some builders put a lot of you know heart into what they call their mocks okay yeah, for sure also that year we the lego movie 2 came out and so we built an entire scene inspired by uh apocalypseburg uh which is in uh the lego movie 2 and it only had a little bit of screen time and the movie came out i think just like one week before the show brooks cascade show yeah so um, everything so, everything mm -hmm. we built was purely everything we built was purely based on like kind of the the preview and just what we would surmise could exist in this in this world <laughs> yeah. and um so we built a lot of stuff that didn't end up being in the movie and it didn't matter because that wasn't the point you know yeah um, yeah yeah and everyone took a took a section so i took benny's workshop uh which is which is like, it's got Benny's ship crash landed into the shop and he's just turned the rest of the shop into a junkyard. Um, and he's got a windmill in the back. And then uh, Mark took on um, a lot of the layout. He took on Metal Beard as well as, um, uh, he, he took the Apo Welcome to Apocalypseburg uh, set, the one with the Statue of Liberty, and he like upscaled it and made it way bigger than it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Brett took on Emmett's house uh, and did a, a really fantastic job with that. And then, Boone, you took on Batman and uh, and created uh, Batman's lair, and it had all sorts of cool animation in it, too. Um, if yeah, you guys want to check that out, that's on Beyond the Brick. Yeah, you can just go search Beyond the Brick Apocalypseburg and look, <laughs> and look for the one where we're talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the next one is a is a collab that I hosted for the first time, and that was this year. Um, a lot of collabs I found were uh, what a collab is. Just kind of backing up is where you you get a lot of different builders together, all building the same thing, and then they 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 put it all together at the show. And usually at the show is the first time everything comes together, and uh, people can enjoy it and see it. Um, and I never put I never hosted a collab before, but um, I wanted to make it easy to get into for people. And uh, at the, this year, I was the theme coordinator for a theme called Post-Apocalyptic. And so our idea was to create dream bunkers. And uh, we came up with bunkers that all had a kind of a standard size, a shape and size. And you could do anything you wanted within that bunker. You could uh, make it a Yeti bunker who loves ice cream like I did there. You could do the one in the middle that Mark made which is like heavily inspired by the show uh, Lost. Like it's just a great austere, very sterile kind of uh, uh, bunker. Um, but we ended up with, um, if you show the next slide, this is the outcome. I thought we would be uh, glad to have maybe two, uh, sorry, 20 to 30 units, but we actually ended up with um, about 120 units and people, lit them up they put in working motors uh they had a we had a full monorail that like came in and, and then left the bunkers and then came back and i think we had over 35 contributors to it as well um so it was fantastic and it was fantastic from the back too because it had all the lights and and stuff hanging off the back of it as well as the motors and all those things that normally would be pretty ugly. But as people were coming in uh, to the show floor, they could see the back of it. And, and uh, I think that was really drawing them in because it was just so weird. Like, what is that? And they wanted to see the rest of it. Awesome. Let's see. It looks like next we have... Oh, it's time to talk about Ewok Adventureland. Let's do it. Um, 
Can you ask one more question here, Perry? Because I I'm really close to. Uh, let's go. Let's go back. I'm gonna go back to. Um, I'm gonna go back to the bunkers here. This is. Yeah. Uh, this is. Just a moment. This is. Oh, I'm messing everything up here. <laughs> this this was a photo taken by Will Nicholson, yes. and uh, Will commonly joins us and i've seen him in the live chat tonight oh look he said photo credit woot isn't that interesting yep. that i just uh he just said that and then i started talking about him oh um, sorry will i spelled your name wrong oh huh, did you Nick, yeah, I turned. oh it's you just inverted that yeah uh, bummer he's gonna be as upset with you as uh jeff McElwee is with me that's right um yeah, yeah. but jeff yeah. jeff can't be too upset because he he, he's the only person that's donated five dollars to um, forwarding the uh, the the success of this stream. Um, I'm just trying to uh, really quickly um, pull in the video for uh, Ewok, and uh, I'm very very close. So um, I'm just gonna say that that's now done, and we should be able to we should be able to watch it here. We'll come we'll pop back over to us. Um, if I want to go back to um, I, I want to pop out of here okay so but we're back to us and now we are going to talk about Ewok Adventureland 2020 and um, I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what this was or what this existed as just a few weeks ago in uh, at Brooks Cascade so I have a video here. You see Josh Hanlon. We're not going to hear him talking because Perry and I are going to keep talking. But uh, this was a collaboration that ended up being how many collaborators? Probably like seven or eight of us if you count yeah. everyone that kind of dove in at the last minute. Right. And um, this is on Endor. And uh, it's a theme park that the Ewoks have built. And we'll dive into uh, you know a little bit about why the Ewoks built this. Um <laughs> But, uh, you know, it really all came from this idea that I had many, many months ago about wanting to put a roller coaster in the trees. And so before Ewok Adventure Land, before Timber Town that you saw on Lego Masters, um, there's this idea of putting in there. You saw the, the roller coaster just ran once there and Mike's going to tap it with his finger and it'll go again. But I don't, I don't, I don't, know, if we'll, I don't know if we'll get to see it go again in this video, but um uh, uh, but I, so I had this idea and I, and I wanted there to be, maybe it will, maybe it'll go. Is it going to go? We'll see if it goes. I, it, this was really a, a, an idea inspired by Portland, inspired by the Northwest. And I, I thought, you know, if there was a Portland theme park, what would it be? And of course we've been to there, there it goes. You can see the, the roller coaster lift going up there and it's going to drop off at the top and, and the roller coaster goes down. Um, and, uh, you know, I think many of us Portland people know about like what Oaks amusement park and it's just sort of a carnival that just never got torn down is what it reminds me of. <laughs> um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to get after me for that. Cause some, a lot of, a lot of people have very fond, you know, childhood memories of Oaks amusement park. But, um, in my mind was like, what if there was like this really Portlandish theme park and, and, and the, the standout attraction to me was, would be roller coasters in the, the trees, you know, and, and I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. And that just existed as an idea in my head for a long time. And then, um, Perry and I started talking about it, uh, last summer. So we'll pop back over to our presentation here and, uh, Perry to get us organized, uh, started a slide deck. Somebody mentioned how organized you've been here on the live stream tonight uh, with with your slide deck, um, and and this was this was part of the way that Perry got us organized. And um, you know the idea was after the Battle of Endor, what happens if the Ewoks used all of that Imperial junk left over from the battle and turned it into turned it into a. Uh, uh, um, a theme park, uh, and so so that's that's the premise of it, and um, we Perry kind of brought together some reference images here, so we just have a lot of reference images from um, you know the the film itself, and 
We've got the bunker there. The bunker ended up becoming the entrance to our theme park. So you'll see that here in a little bit. These are just sort of like, um, these are like concept art, right? For the, for yeah. the film. Um, yep. And uh, so this just kind of inspired us. And, you know, so this was like, as we were working on the collaboration and as we invited people into the collaboration, this just kind of gave us something, you know, to look at um and and sort of all sort of rally around as we sort of mm -hmm. put this stuff together um and then we we talked about <laughs> the ewok 80s movies and um so the one and i think the reason that this came became such a huge part of the conversation was this so uh, the one on the left caravan of courage and ewok <laughs> adventure um so the, depending on depending on which cover of that movie you see it is sometimes called Caravan of Courage, um, an Ewok adventure, and sometimes it's just called Ewok adventure, um, like a Caravan of Courage or something like that. It's like they it's they sort of interchange it, and so that was like I thought, well, that could be the name of this theme park, Ewok Adventure Land, um, mm -hmm. and so these are kind of some references from those. You know, it's just more um, indoor stuff, and then our supplemental inspiration was like you know stuff about disneyland and so we we were really kind of focused on like how is disneyland built how do we want to pull people into this mock uh perry do you want to talk a little bit about that right so i, I started watching the show um imagineering on uh, disney plus and i was blown away with how much they um uh, they plan right they, they really want you when you go into the park to feel like you've left the outside world right so they they put a uh, they put berms up so you can't see the the roads or the trees or the power lines, and then once you're in the park, they have a central entryway. There's a central courtyard kind of in the middle. There's a center area, and that's that's usually where it, um, uh, some kind of statue is, and uh, you get the best view of the castle from there. And each of the lands has something that stands out and and it becomes a focal point. So we had all these kind of grand ambitions of making. Uh, you know, kind of unique lands and a lot of pathways and things that we didn't have the time to do some of those things. Um, uh, but I was inspired by that. Plus um, places like uh, Euro Disney, where they, uh, they tried to make it look like the entire park was just placed into the side of a giant mountain, you know, mm. and they had, um, they had those trees in that one photo. They had the trees that are kind of square in shape. Um, uh, I, I really just love the aesthetic and the way they kind of handled the, the blending of real versus fantasy um, for that park. Um, and ultimately, uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Right. Like just, it just looks so fun. And, and what I told Boone early on, because um, we started talking about it in summer of 2019, uh, first of all, I, I thought it was crazy for trying to come up with roller coaster in the trees. And he was telling me about his idea of a vertical lift. I'm like, I guess that could work, but there's just so many things that could go wrong. Um, and and uh, and the only yeah. reason the only reason I thought of it was because we wanted to use. So we had come up with the idea that it's indoor, it's Ewoks. They're building stuff out of Imperial junk. Yeah. And, and we wanted to use gray roller coaster track. Yeah. And at the time, and perhaps still, I don't know, but the 45 degree, which is, yeah. which is what the Lego, you know, the Lego creator roller coaster set uses the 45 degree to, to lift the coaster up to the top of the hill. Right. And, and that only, that element only came in red. And so my yep. first idea was we hide it behind a tree that has fallen 45 right. degrees. That's but, right. but then I thought, what if the roller coaster goes <laughs> straight up? <laughs> and the great thing theoretically about that idea is that your, the footprint of your roller coaster does not, the, the footprint of your rise does not have to be equal to the height of your rise. Yeah. So right. your, your rise, you know, your footprint can be very small. You know, theoretically, that roller coaster could be built as a spiral that yeah. goes as, as high as you can possibly make that lift go and just spirals yeah. straight down. And you could build that roller coaster on a, 
you could probably build it on a 16 by 16 <laughs> base plate or maybe a 32 <laughs> by 32 base plate. Um, right. And but other as as long as you're using that 45, you know, as as high as you want to go is as yeah. is as at least as much footprint as you need, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll and move a lot on. of people. A lot of people say, oh, uh, the Ewok Adventure coaster was inspired by uh, Timbertown, and it's actually the other way around. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Ewok Adventureland idea occurred before Timbertown. I just yeah. – I had that idea, and we hadn't executed yeah. it yet. And so yeah. when, when we had that first Lego Masters Challenge, I, I pulled the idea out, and we gave it a shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ben Khan yeah. said it still only comes in red, and I would trust him because he <laughs> is the foremost – um, yep. you know, uh, 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 expert in, in, um, yeah, roller coasters. amusement rides around here. Okay. So I already showed a yeah. video of the mock, but should I, should I show the monorail here? Yeah, let's do it. So this is, um, this is the monorail. And one of the things that we sort of discovered about the monorail is, uh Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. I can't show us and the monorail at the same time. That's fine. Um, but one of the things we discovered about the monorail is that it's just so hardy and trusty. And, um, mm. you know, the, the roller coaster had to be babysat nonstop, but this monorail just ran and ran and ran the entire weekend. And, um, you know, even the, the, the track sort of, you know, when you have enough of it, it can just kind of flex and go almost anywhere you want it to. Uh, I mean, it is quite rigid, but, um, you know, when you're sort of guiding it across the terrain or lifting it up. And so one of the things I did that I'd wanted to do for a while was um, this this loop, this kind of where it, the track loops upon itself and mm -hmm. the monorail goes, you know, up or down an entire level by just uh, going around that loop. And then the other thing we accomplished here, and you can see a little bit about what I'm talking here, the, the track over here is not level. It goes around this loop at the end and it's just kind of going up and around the terrain. Oh, and now you see the, the video isn't quite going where I want it to. Um, but uh, anyway, the we just sort of the great thing about the monorail is that the track doesn't have to be level because of those yeah. teeth gripping that middle part of the monorail. It's not like a train, you know. It can go up and inclines, it can go down, it can be si a little bit sideways as long as its center of balance is still working well there. Um, yeah. And so we we loved it, um, and we had each end, you know, each end of our monorail track was its own loop that sort of yeah. turned around on itself with a switch track which those switch tracks are the i think kind of the one thing in the monorail system that sort of automatically do something based on the train just kind of coming by and switching it um yeah. and so we were able to make that just like one big it, it's not a it's not like a continuous circuit loop it's sort of an endless back and forth loop and mm -hmm. um and that it was something i've never done before and and so it, it seemed um it seemed, uh, you know, fun and 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 dynamic to me. I um, love that we got the monorail to go kind of around the perimeter of the park the way it does at Disneyland. Right. Yeah. And be and right over and behind the sun, the main entrance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to get some extras of the uh, the the half um, the half curve. It, I, it's not half. It's a each curve piece is a quarter of a circle. And there's there's one eighth of a circle that has these weird little teeth because it only fits with the switch track or itself or the opposite of itself. And then you can sort of get these curves, and we had to get some extras of those to get that that sort of like a subtler, a more a more subtle curve than you can accomplish with the typical one quarter uh, monorail curve tracks. Okay, and next up we have the specifications here you want to tell us a little bit about this we might want to uh, we might want to breeze over this a little bit yeah yeah no but, this is just to show you that you have to write stuff sometimes yeah but when and then the next one that's the drawing we made that night that we the first talked on at dinner yeah, right you want yeah. to talk about 3po in the middle there yeah so we just had this idea that like what if c3po or what if what if they have the statue in the middle of the park like disney has and it's sort of i think it's called the partner statue where walt disney is standing there waving at the people in the park and and Mickey he's holding Mickey Mouse's hand. And we thought wouldn't it be funny if we had that statue except it's a big C3PO 
holding the hand of an Ewok because the Ewoks sort of in Return of the Jedi think that C-3PO is a deity and they worship him. And so we, we thought that was a clever idea. So we pulled that off. Do we have any pictures of that? Um, here you can see Perry sort of took that original drawing and turned it into something that was a, you know, a little more precise. Um, and, and you see that red, that red is the original plan we had for the, the for the monorail. And that changed a little bit. It, it's primarily the same. Um, but it, I think it just got a little more interesting, a little more dynamic. And, and, yeah. uh, this was Perry built the plot for, so we hit our, our entire layout was three by four, 48 by 48 plates. Um, and Perry built the first eight and I built the last, the last four and we needed some connections and some passageways to put cables through. All right, let's see. I think it would probably be good if we moved toward Q and A. Are you okay with that? Or what's this yeah. work in progress and schedule? Oh, let's do it. No, we don't want to miss this stuff. This is just Perry's beautiful builds. He turned this UF, this official UFO spinner set into something that looked like uh, the, um, the the probe droid from Empire Strikes Back with with speeder bikes on it. <laughs> and then the beautiful, I wish we had more pictures of these running or more video of these running, but the beautiful uh, uh, TIE fighter uh, Ferris wheel. With the, I had to build that, that wing like three times because I couldn't get the geometry right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, okay. More planning. More yeah. planning. Look at this. Yeah. You get all the progress shots. We could have done a whole... We could have done a oh my goodness we could have done a whole this is this is Flynn and Richard building the Ewok Adventureland sign and um, there we go oh some comparisons between Timbertown from Lego Masters and uh, and the the monorail lift or the the I'm sorry the roller coaster lift from Ewok Adventureland and then uh, the night before the convention a huge part of it collapsed when we were putting it in the car. So that was a real, real sad event, but luckily we were able to pull it all back together the next day. Okay, holy moly. Oh, there's a bunch of the collaborators. So you see Mark is doing some work on it. Sam is doing some work on it. You got Richard and Flynn there setting up their, their sign. We had a real wonderful time with this. Um, and we got Mike there in the background. This is, he's helping us set up. We ultimately needed some wood framing to... Uh, to make Richard and Flynn's sign work without uh, my trees completely collapsing. All right, and this is what it looks like completed. Nice. Should we move to Should we move to some Q and A? Oh, dark mode. It. Dark mode was so cool. <laughs> Here, we'll just blast through. There, that's finally the end. But dark mode was really great. It was, um, you know, it was a. This is a cool image that you know kind of shows things spinning around, and it was a completely different mock in the in the dark mode. Um, but anyway, all right, it is time for the AFOL Q and A. Put those questions and answers in the live chat, and we will do the best we can to answer as many as we possibly can. Buckets are great. Says, what should I build? That's a that's a general question that you know came out before I made the official move to Q and A. So Perry, if you just had to tell someone randomly what should they build. What would, what would you recommend? The UCS Falcon. It's a good set, especially if you're a beginner. Okay. Um, yeah, I would recommend. You know, uh, if you can get, if you can start getting into um, a Creator Expert, uh, many of the idea sets or the big motorized uh, Technic sets, you're going to start learning some uh, really incredible techniques. You know that you might not get in some of the other some of the other sets. Um, let's see. Ben Khan says, how about a pickle? What? Oh, what? he's recommending to build a pickle. Um, we've got Solid questions advice. in here. Oh, Navy dog says, are you going to build a bunker next year? You're probably talking to me. Cause I didn't build, I didn't build a bunker this yeah, year. Yeah, Boone, you need to make one. Yeah. I had an idea. Um, there was a list of about 10 ideas I had for different mocks 
that that didn't make it to Bricks Cascade. And I was collecting wow. I was collecting parts for my bunker. I started the foundation of a bunker, and I I just I didn't finish it in time to bring it to uh, to the convention. Um, so yeah, uh, Perry, is bunker going to happen next year? I think it will. I definitely think it will. Awesome. Holy moly, Cody Otley with a $20 super chat. Gee whiz. He says, wow. thanks for doing a full spotlight live. It's a great distraction in the world of madness. Hash Thank you, Cody. Hashtag bearded builders guild. Um, did I say that right? Beard, bearded builders, BBG bearded builders guild. Guild. Yeah. Um, Cody, you're the man. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to get to buy Perry a meal the next time we're face to face. Um, and, uh, and, uh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, Cody, you're the man. Um, Cody, I have an idea and I can't talk about it right now. Um, but I'm going to tell Perry about it and I'm going to see what he thinks and then I'll send you a message. Okay. Uh, let's see. A Boone, Worm Powered says, My girlfriend doesn't want to watch the latest episode of Lego Masters. How do I convince her? What do you mean she doesn't want to? Why? Uh, just... My trick with my wife is you just start playing it. Mm. When you know she's going to be walking in the room, either finishing dinner or whatever, you just start playing it, and then they'll watch the rest of it. And uh, usually you only need about 10, 15 minutes before they're like, I need to see the rest of the series. Oh, cow. Okay. Stephen W. Howard, $50. <laughs> Who are you, wow. Stephen? Is this the first question? All right, we'll see. Um, Stephen, thank you so much. $50. Thank you, Stephen. I, I, I cannot even begin to, uh, to express my thanks. Um, Stephen says, what is your favorite idea set, past, present, or currently in review? Thanks for a full live. Thank you so much, Stephen. Uh, well, my, uh, my favorite ideas project currently i'll give you two we'll start from there and then we'll go all the way through my favorite projects that have not reached review yet are holly's uh, uh coraline house uh, it's the apartments mm -hmm. um so go check that out and jake sadovich's pedal car um two phenomenal builds that i just can't imagine not becoming sets uh if they if they get to review um and then let's see, uh, I just got to review, it, it, it is now an official set, but it doesn't come out for another few days. Um, it is the, uh, the Pirates of Barracuda Bay. And did we talk about that a little bit at the beginning of this, this stream? I don't think we did. No, um, no. This, this is the, uh, this just got sent to me like a week ago um, for review on Beyond the Brick, and I, I had the great pleasure of getting to talk to the product designers behind this and this is this is the the pirates of barracuda bay and it is based on um well it, it was it was a lego ideas project that was not based on classic pirates but you can see here that it, this sort of overtly is tied to the original kind of pirates line and it's got these bits of shipwrecked ship on the island and then when you put it together, you can take apart those pieces of the ship and, and, and assemble the ship. And it's sort of a new take on the Black Seas Barracuda from 1989. And you can see my original Black Seas Barracuda is right up there on the shelf. Um, was, you know, it has been my, my favorite set of, of all time. Uh, so, Perry, Stephen's question. Do you have an answer to any of those? Hmm. I think I really like the treehouse that made it through. Uh, it's beautiful and organic, and and uh, the idea of being able to swap out the leaves, you know, so that it's fall versus summer, I thought was really cool. And then the other one I really liked is one you talked about a while back called the Ruined House, mm. uh, Ruined House by Curtin. Um, that's a staff pick right now on the site. Oh, but cool. When I when I first saw that one, I I was like, that's not Lego, and I look really closely and realized it is made out of lego it just uses so many great techniques to create decay on the on the walls and everything yeah 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 that's awesome hey uh steven thank you so much for uh for your donation to the to the live stream you know it's it's 
Um, it's the people who come into the live chat and that support us all the way through this. And then, uh, you know, especially the people who are able to, to contribute money that's beyond um, what my expectation would be. How do I, how do I say that? I just, uh, my gratitude is incredibly great to you and, it, and it's, it's going to help us continue to make this something that we can do over and over and over again. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Boone, are you doing a build challenge? Pittsburgh Sportscaster says, Boone, are you doing a build challenge? Yes, I just finished one. You'll see a video come out about the results. You just will kind of feature all of the submissions and talk about some of them um, probably about next Tuesday on, on Boone Builds here on YouTube. And then by that time, hopefully I'll be able to announce my next build challenge. Perry, do you see any questions in there? Let's see. They asked about our favorite Star Wars movies and shows. Well, um, Return of the Jedi is my favorite. It has, and, and, and uh, I love the original trilogy. And I think Return of the Jedi has been my favorite. I tell this story. Um, my very first exposure to, I, I, I was just a bit too young. You know, I, I'd say I was probably 10 years too young to have experienced any of them in the theater for the first time. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I guess, how do I say it? Um, I, you know, I was a child of the eighties, but I was much more kind of aware of like late eighties stuff and, and Star Wars was late seventies and early eighties. Um, so my very first memory of Star Wars, uh, was going to a, uh, a department store with my folks and they wanted to look at furniture and stuff. And uh, I sat down in the electronics department in front of the giant wall of old TVs. Well, they were brand new then, but now they would be old. Um, and, you know, they would put one movie on and it would just, the same movie would show on the, all of those screens in the, in the, uh, the electronics department. And, uh, and we went in there and it was, it was Return of the Jedi. And it, it was not only Return of the Jedi, but the point where the battle of Endor was happening. And so it was kind of like this, they were alternating between the stuff going on on the ground with the Ewoks and the rebels. And then the stuff that was going on up in space with the, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the second death star and, and, and the rebels that are flying around up there and that whole thing. And I was just mm -hmm. completely captivated. And, um, yeah. that was my first experience with star Wars. And so i am just, I always have a place a special place in my heart for the Ewoks and for the Battle of Endor and, and for Return of the Jedi. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, so you'll you'll see. I'm sure you'll see that come up for me over and over again. But but it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to explore that in uh, Ewok Adventureland. I think my favorite was Empire Strikes Back. It was the first movie I ever saw that didn't have a happy ending. Mm. And I was like, how can they make movies like this where it doesn't have a happy ending? It just ruined me as a kid. I think. And I saw the first Star Wars, New Hope, in the theater. And my mom took me. I was six years old. And up till then, the only movies I'd ever seen were like Charlie Brown cartoons in the theater. So there's all these lasers and shooting and sound. And I remember thinking there's something broken with the projector because every now and then we see these flashes of light and the sound changes in the room. And it's this like explosive sound. I, I thought that we were in a defective movie. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought everything was broken. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I didn't know that I was supposed to be enjoying that. So I actually did not understand a new hope until I saw it um, when I was older. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Holly, Holly says uh, with a nineteen dollar ninety nine cent super chat. Thanks for plugging the Coraline project, and with that, with that donation, that's we're gonna go ahead right on over and uh, and show it. Lego Ideas Coraline, I should be able to find it fairly quickly here, and um, we'll pop. Oh my goodness, people, listen, so close, nine thousand three hundred two supporters. 52 days left. I'm going to accept the stinking cookies to get this out of the way. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. Yeah. Go support it. Look, here's the deal. Yeah. We're going to do some quick math. I'm going to do some quick math in my head. 
There are 41 people watching right now. <laughs> if you each got two people to go support this, no. If you each got five people, I don't know, what's five times? Five to, that'd be 200. If you each got 15 <laughs> people, if you each got 15 people to go support this, we would push it over the edge. Go out tomorrow with a clipboard in the street. Oh, you're not allowed to talk to people face to face. All right. Get out there. We got 52 days left. I think we can do it. It's what well, we have. Yeah. We have uh, 698 supporters we need to get in the next 52 days. It seems like yeah. it's got to be possible. It's got to be right. possible. Spread and if you love Leica's work, this will open the doors for so many more Leica Lego sets. Like, you've got to do this. Yes. And, um, and, and because, uh, let's see, because Stephen W. Howard donated $50, I'll say his name one more time. Stephen, <laughs> Stephen W. Howard, I'm, you need to sing I'm his sure. Name. Can you, can you sing there we go, yeah. for Stephen? Stephen right. W. Howard, he's brave, he's not a coward. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> um... Oh, he says ten thousand is hard to get. It took me six hundred twenty days to get to uh, to get the Gemini to ten thousand. The Gemini. This is Stephen. Oh my goodness! All right, go vote for Coraline Pink Palace apartment. This this live stream has definitely um, degraded into now we're just a bunch of people like hang, <laughs> hanging out. Um, Lego Gemini. Did I just spell it wrong? There it is. This is you. What's your... Why didn't I recognize your name on YouTube? This is your, um... You, like, everywhere else you are just like Gemini, aren't you? Um, this thing is amazing. And you just reached the 10,000. Is it gonna get... Is it gonna get... Is it gonna get made? Did it get picked, Steven? Tell us... Uh, Jeff McElwee says, bunch of Lego nerds, man. Yep. That's, that's all that's left here. Yeah, we are reached the after party. Did the Gemini, did the Gemini hit the, the was it in the most recent announcement? It hit 10,000, right? Is it in review? Did it pass review? This is me waiting on that. So we don't know yet. Okay, so it hit the ten thousand. Will it, it? It is in review, so we'll see if we'll see in the next. Um, do they do that three times a year? I don't know the details, people. But everyone, give Stephen a round of applause. Thank Good you for job. joining us here on uh, Eiffel Spotlight Live, Stephen, and congratulations on getting to ten thousand. We're gonna cross our fingers. Seems like a lot of. Seems like a, lot, like a lot of space stuff, a lot of NASA stuff has been successful in the past. Um, yeah. So we'll cross our fingers there. Okay, do we have any other questions in the live chat? If you keep asking us questions, we'll stay on. If you, uh, if you don't ask us questions, then uh, we'll probably decide we're done. Oh, Derek says, Boone, a few months ago at a Portland meeting, you said you were... Starting to work on your first Lego castle. How's that coming along? Okay, I can show it. I would, Go get it's, it. No, it's it's not even... I don't know what to say about it. Thank you. That's a good question, um, Derek. I'll show it to you here. Let me put myself on, on full screen. I haven't even really gotten to the castle part yet, but I'll show you what I have. Um, it's going to take me a second here. Okay, so this is like... Uh, hold on. Sorry. This is precarious. So this is like sort of a, a crater lake kind of deal. And it's obviously it needs a lot of detail. But the whole pedestal is just kind of rock. And then this is water. And then that's like a waterfall coming down. And then these, these sort of pillars are stone pillars that will be supporting this, um, this sort of like suspended platform. And that's where the castle begins. And I've just barely started the work on the very bottom of the castle. Um, I don't know if I'm super happy with this or not, but it's definitely a work in progress. But uh, but that's that's the castle I'm working on. 
I, I can see it in my head. It's going to be glorious, but I've got <laughs> got a long got a long long way to go on it. Um, and it's not honestly the it's not at the top of my priority list right now. Um, I actually have, I guess I I I've just kind of started doing commissions, um, and I I have a I have a very urgent commission that is uh going on over here, and I can't talk about it yet, but um, but it's fun and and that's sort of my priority right now. Oh, okay. Ben says if you could be any Lego element, if you if you could be <laughs> I'll if you could one. be any Lego element, which would you be? Perry? Oh my gosh. Um, I'd be translucent because I'm a very transparent kind of person. Aww. So I would go with uh, a blue because that's a trustworthy color. And it would end up being a 2 by 4 brick because it's very versatile. Nice. Good. I like it. That's so thoughtful. You, Mine would be like I'd be like a hinge, so I don't, so I'm not trapped doing like just one thing. So you, you know? can pivot. Yeah, yeah. Um, or, or I'd be a I'd be a flick fire, um, you know, one of those spring loaded flick fire missiles, so that I can like be waiting and then be like, gotcha, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Kyo, man, I can't. Sai, Siolar, Lorate, Oh, see you later. See you later. Sorry. See you. <laughs> see you later. Says, how valuable is it to be in a lug? And I would say, I'm sure it depends on the lug. Every lug, depending on where you are, is going to be different. I find being a member of our lug incredibly valuable. Um, just the the um the collaborations that come out of the lug the the uh the friendships that come out of the lug the the inspiration the you know when we push each other to to do different things and the ideas and and um the support that we give each other i i you know i i really appreciate being in the lug perry what's the question <laughs> how oh, how valuable oh, yeah infinitely i can't imagine having been a an a fall without the support of the lug and meeting people there yeah yeah because it's it's your support group and it makes you feel a little bit more normal like when i meet people who are not quite in a port in a lug yet they are sort of closeted like they're sort of like oh, yeah i do like lego and they don't want they don't really want to talk about it you know so you have to you i have to, uh, you need that i think i feel so bad for all the people who discovered sort of the adult fan community at Bricks Cascade this year and have not had an opportunity to connect with the lug because of the the quarantine situations. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Right? Cuz cuz I feel like the first I feel like the first couple of lug meetings after the convention every year are always yeah. like an explosion of new people and it's always wonderful. And unfortunately, right. we didn't have uh we didn't have that this year. Yeah. But um Anyway, yeah. Ben Kahn yeah. says, Lug is life. Dave Morgan says, Love is amazing. Lug, Lug is amazing. Love, Lug. Um, okay, good. Love the Lug of life. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, is there one north of Seattle? I know there are a few Lugs up in that area. Isn't there a map somewhere? Let me see if there is. I think there's a map somewhere of all the Lugs. Um, Lego user group map. We'll find this, we'll see, community locator, here we go. So this is the community locator, and um, we'll see if there is a oh, wow. search locations. We're just going to zoom in. So you I can, no you can this existed. You can see, you know, sort of like these lugs expand out oh. here. So there's two in our area. This one is uh, the port lug, and then this one in Salem is technically the north... Uh, the Great Northern Lego Railway. And oh. then up in Seattle area, there are, what is this for? So it looks like the farthest north, and I don't know how they, I don't know how they judge where these are located, 
So here we've got sea lug. So there is Seattle, the sea lug. Um, then over here we've got, uh, um, why is there two here? Oh, Bionicle Sector 1. But that says two, so there should be another one right around here somewhere. I don't know why that would be. Um, some of these, you never know how active they are when you look at a thing like this. So it looks like Sea Lug is probably the most north. Um, unless you pop over to Victoria, which I doubt is what you're talking about. I'm, I imagine, I don't know, you're probably talking about like um, Everett or something in these north of Seattle areas. So your best bet would probably just be to like seeing how can you connect with the the sea lug and, and how often do they meet. Um, I don't know. Some other people might have um, some stuff in the... Uh, can you check lugs for Wisconsin? Okay. <laughs> the live stream... <laughs> <laughs> the live stream has just now become, where's my lug? Uh, let's see, Wisconsin. Can you email my mom? Yeah, yes. Yep, yep. Where's Wisconsin? Um, Wisconsin, there it looks like one. You've got one in the um, Madison area. So it's a uh, Wis lug is based in Madison. I don't know what that means. So... Um, there you go. You got one in, in Wisconsin. Check it out. See if uh, see if they ever do any events that are near you or near enough to you to, to go um, meet up with them. All right. Well, Radic asked what a lug is. Oh, lug. Good question. Lego user group. Um, so Lego user group, they're sort of like the official way for um, kind of the adult Lego fan community to gather in like locations. And so some of them are registered. Um, I, you know, I wonder now that we're looking at this, now that we're looking at this map and it's on the Lego Ambassador Network. I wonder if that means that only our lugs are on this map, and that could be the case. So Port Lug is based in Portland. It is a registered Lego user group, and. Um, uh, this is inaccurate. It says one member, but what that means is that one one member of Port Lug is in the Lego Ambassador Network. So every every recognized or registered Lego user group has one person who is an ambassador and kind of has a somewhat official relationship with the Lego group. And that's how we that's how we learn about some of those things. All right, here we go. I, I'm here to serve the people. Uh, Nathaniel5231 says, how about Michigan? Michigan. I'm only doing this for another three minutes. It is 7.57 and I want to go inside. Um, <laughs> Michigan. 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 Not Michigan. Looks like there's three in the Detroit area. Wow. Um, so you've got... In the Detroit area, there's a garage lug. There is... Michigan Lego user group. Uh, the, I can't, what is that? Therapeutic lug, I think is what that said. And then over here on the west side of Michigan, I believe we've got, oh, geez. Um, in Benton Harbor, there is the Western Michigan Lego user group. There we go. What is Cody frowning about? Cody says, Jeff, OK lug needs to reapply. Oh, okay, frowny it's a face. Member issue. Okay. Yes, there are. Win Smith says, What? Only two hours. Do you not know how much <laughs> do you not know how much quarantine time we have left? Yeah, I'm sorry, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this has been really awesome. Thank you to Stephen W. Howard, um, Holly, Cody, and Jeff for being our super super chats tonight. You really Thank are. You you're you're going to help this thing move forward. Um, you're going to help us, help me specifically, and hopefully there will be a point in time where I can uh, pay Perry to leave Trigger and uh, come work with me. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Thank you all so much. It's been really wonderful. Um, 
Love you all. <laughs> Two hours in. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> this has been A Full Spotlight Live. Thanks for watching. Let's go! Try